Hello, it's Jimmy here. The Rallies have here a Hyundai i30. At least I think it's an i30. It's not really badged, but yeah, I think it's an i30. Right, as usual, this car has come from a couple hours away. So hopefully I can give them a resolution uh, for their problem. And I'm going to show you what that is right now. So right here we have a flashing smoke symbol. Engine light on as well. Okay, I'm going to use this scan tool from launch. Uh, it says X431 Pad 9 Euro on the back, but Launch UK just call it the X431 Euro. Okay, we're going to hit Intelligent Diagnose and see what fault code we have. As the fault code is going to give us an idea of what's going on and where we need to look. Now, I haven't plugged this in yet, but if it's the usual Hyundai Kia fault, uh, normally they have a P200 300 fault. Um, so the customer doesn't know what the fault code is. Um, all they know is it's been regen and the fault comes back. So we're going to see what we can find. If it's a P200 300 fault, then it's bad news, unfortunately. But we'll see now. Just going through the scan. One fault in the engine there, everything else looks green. Almost finished, 92%. It's just these grey ones take a little bit longer to... It's trying to search for this module, but obviously it doesn't have it, so that's why it takes, it takes a while. All right, ECM. P200, 300, yeah, it's exactly what I thought. Um, if we go to data stream, for this you know, data stream for this type of fault on this car is not going to be 100% so it's not going to give you like a 100% um, accuracy but I'm just going to see what we can type in here right uh, we've got all of this up we've got a strange reading right here which is minus 13 pressure I think I've seen that before actually if we rev it up Let's get it to 3000 RPM. 25, 29, 172 kilometers is when it done its last region 60 kilometers ago. Right, but why is it giving a negative reading when it's idling? Now let's turn the engine off. Oh, off, engine on. And it's minus 18. Right, so we've got maybe a software issue here with this. I've seen many of these cars before. We've tried replacing this sensor and uh, it didn't make any, any difference. So what I'm going to try and do here for now is see if I can calibrate the sensor by looking for it here on some of these. Let me see. Uh, this one. We're looking at differential pressure sensor replacement. Turn the ignition off for 20 seconds. Okay. Okay, now that's been done. We're going to go back. Uh, we'll try and read that live data again. See if any change has happened. No, it hasn't. And it's even gotten a little bit more erratic, I think. Come under, have a look at the exhaust pipe. Crack DPF. So that is a cracked DPF. Now, not only shouldn't it have any black soot on there, but that is coming out in lumps. You could literally get a spoon and fill it. Um, so it's got a cracked DPF, but there's also an issue with the software. Now, I've had a dozen of these come to me in the past, and I've seen the same issue, and I've never been able to resolve it. Uh, we've put new sensors on, we've put um, calibration done, we've had all of this, and, and they've come to me from Hyundai or Kia, uh, which they haven't been able to resolve it. So. My question is, if Kia can't resolve it, or Hyundai, and I can't, who can? So I do carry a lot of these sensors in the glove box. This is one that I tried to use in a car before and we had to take it back off because it didn't fix the issue. So I'm just going to fit that sensor on just to see does it make a difference with the live data. Okay, so our sensor gives a minus 9 reading, which is different again. Now that would point to me that maybe it is a sensor issue, but... Uh, 
I don't want to risk putting a sensor on it. It looks to me like a software issue. I mean, you could say that sensor I've got there is probably not working as well, but we swapped one over on another car um, for an original sensor that, that came from Kia. Um, so instead of me just swapping them back over, I just kept the old one and left the customer keep the other one. So I know that sensor that I've just fitted is, was working. Um, now, it's just what do you do from here? Try to recalibrate the sensor I've fitted. So we need to turn the ignition off. Okay, so that still hasn't made any difference. Um, so the ignition's off, engine's off. We shouldn't have any reading on there, it should be zero. Uh, even though this sensor is reading minus 9, but the original sensor is reading minus 18. Now you can't always trust one single tool if you've got something that looks off that shouldn't be. It's always worth checking on a second tool of a different brand just to make sure that they're giving you the same readings. So that's what I'm going to do here and we'll set this up now. Okay, so that's still giving us the same reading there, but we've got two on this, which is... I don't know what that one means. It doesn't read anything. Uh, we're going to try and calibrate it now again on this tool just to see if we got the option that one menu ok so that's not made any difference there ok so I'll just put the original sensor back on Ok so that's the original sensor, we're going back to minus 18 again. just want to have a look at this, both of these pressures here, yeah, that one doesn't do anything. So it's got an issue with the software, as well as maybe the pressure sensor, but the DPF is cracked. Now what I would refuse to do is, I would refuse to fit a DPF to this because I know if you do fit another one, it's likely going to crack again. Um, I, what I don't have currently at the minute is means of testing fuel injectors. Now before you put a DPF on this I would definitely have the fuel injectors tested because if they are over fueling especially during a region it will overheat and crack the DPF and it will crack your new DPF if you put that in. So what I'm going to suggest here is they take it um, to have the injectors tested. I've got a friend who can do that for them and also have maybe the software checked and updated if necessary um, and then you can put a new DPF on it. But Unfortunately for me here roadside, um, there's nothing I can physically do here to um, move forward. So unfortunately that's the bad news for that Hyundai uh, and I'll see you on the next video.